Mm, I bet you it's beautiful. Opportunity to see two volcanoes at the same time. Not very many places in the world you can see that. Yeah. I was talking earlier today, everybody sharing the view outside of their um, outside of their schools. And we do have some schools around here that have some beautiful views. I was like, you realize we're ruining kids for college. You can't go to college and have views as beautiful as some of our high schools are. Working on non-pen time. Ooh, that's a that's a time zone difference. Marianne, great to see you. A very long time ago, I was very fortunate to have been able to have worked with Marianne in Indonesia, which again, we're talking a lot about volcanoes. Uh, that's oh, that's another place that's got some incredible volcanoes. Thanks, Marianne, for joining. That's great. Well, thank you for being here. We're going to uh, honor your time uh, and get going here. Trisha has just dropped the link again over in the chat. You're going to want to make sure you have that because it's got links embedded in it. And uh, as we get going today, uh, we are going to be looking at ways to really honor reflection at the end of the year. And, and if you've been to any of our webinars or trainings over the past year, you know that we, we love to practice uh, going through what, what hopefully you can take back to your school and work with your colleagues as well. So you're going to need that slide deck. And our goal today is to experience and engage uh, as an active community. So we're gonna be asking you to do stuff. This is not a sit, to, sit and get session. Uh, if, you, if you know Trisha and I, you know that uh, we very rarely do sit and get sessions. Uh, if anything, we get complaints that are, there are too many resources uh, inside of our training. So uh, be ready for that if this is, if this is new to you. But uh, hopefully you have that link to the presentation. Uh, again, we'll put it over there in the chat here in just a second, one last time. Uh, if you if you need that, uh, you're going to want that open on your device so that you can click on some links and follow along with us. And with that, Tricia, I think I'll turn it over to you to get started. Thanks, Jeff, very much. Uh, and I'll point out right here on slide two, yes, we want you to experience, we're going to ask you to engage, but we're also giving you this session because we're hoping that you have the experience, you understand what the activities are all about. Uh, again, with, with some luck, you'll see some value in that. And then you might want to take this and walk your faculty through this process, your department, your class through this process. So we also wanted to give you that just kind of as a, a pathway that you can go ahead, take, edit, remix, do with it what you would like. And we have three essential questions that really are going to underpin our learning today. Um, you know, asking us, as Jeff mentioned, it's not going to be sit and get. So we are going to sort of have our thinking caps on here and be asking ourselves as leaders, because all of us are leaders in different capacities, in what ways do I model curiosity? In what ways do I engage my vulnerability with others? And in what ways have I learned to value my unique perspective? And all three of those questions we're gonna look at through this lens of storytelling. So I'm gonna give you just about 20 seconds here, and I'm gonna ask you just in the back of your mind to pick one colleague who you work with right now, uh, because we're gonna we're kind of gonna work through their perspective and be doing a little bit of engagement on behalf of that person. So we'll take twenty seconds. I'll be quiet. Think about somebody who you you know that you can kind of get into into their headspace, if you will, and and you're able to kind of draw from their perspective. And over in the chat, if you just want to maybe send us an OK so we can see that most people have that person in mind, that would be great for us to know that we can move into the next space. So if you've picked your person, please just go ahead and share an OK in the chat. So if you've got the link to our slides, on slide number five, when you click there, it's gonna take us over to uh, what 
those in design thinking refer to as an empathy map, meaning you engage your empathy and you answer questions, not necessarily from your standpoint, but from the standpoint of somebody else. So we're going to take just about 90 seconds here. You might not get through all four questions, and that's totally okay. It might just be one of these questions where I come over to the icon that looks like a post-it note, and I'm going to write my answer. And I'll add it to the corner where that question is. So pick one of those questions. If you have high ambitions and you want to get through two or three or even four of the questions, that's great. And if this space, if this Jamboard gets a little busy and you run out of room with your stickies, you can go ahead over to the next frame. So take about 90 seconds here with that person in mind. What has been their most significant small win, do you think? Or what might that educator most need from another peer at the end of the year? My favorite question here is, what do you think that person would say has been an unspoken rule for teaching during the pandemic? So we'll take some time here on this Jamboard. Please add your sticky note in the corner. And again, this isn't your response, but this is thinking through the peer that you picked out. So those of you just joining us, the silence isn't you. Uh, we are over on slide number three, where when we click that slide, it takes us to the document that you see on the screen. This is a Jamboard. And we're thinking through the lens of one of our colleagues and answering those questions. So uh, again, the example in the bottom right quadrant, you know, what's an unspoken rule? What has been an unspoken rule for the person who you're thinking through their mindset. Uh, I really like this, an unspoken rule, according to uh, one of our attendees, that person thinks, hey, you need to be prepared for changes. So just taking about another 30 seconds here. Again, thanks for, for adding your thoughts. Once you've added yours, just checking out what some of the other responses have been. And as you look through that Jamboard, we're going to ask you to use uh, what is one of our favorite protocols. Um, and, and Jeff knows how big we are on protocols here at Shifting School. We actually have a free collection of our favorite protocols uh, from the academic year that you can get from our Shifting Schools resources library. Uh, and this is one of our favorites that we refer to as hunches and crunches. So as you're looking at what others shared on that Jamboard, what are your instincts telling you that we should pay a little more attention to as educators? Or what's your crunch? Meaning, what do you think we need to put a little more effort into asking about? What are some questions that we should be having conversations about as educators? So we'll ask you to toggle back and forth between that Jamboard, see the different contributions, and then in the chat, if you would share with us, what is one of your hunches or what is one of your crunches 
So what's on that board that you think, hey, that's interesting. We should pay a little more attention to that. Or what is something that makes you think, huh, there's another question we should be asking each other as educators. And I'll just reiterate, while you're thinking about this, going back to the Jamboard and, and looking at it and thinking, okay, what do we need to focus a little bit more on? Or what is something we could be a little bit more curious about in that editable version of this? This is exactly how I would do this with my students or with my department team or with my faculty. I'd ask everybody, let's get out of our perspective for a moment. Let's think about how some of our peers are seeing this. Or if you were doing this with your staff, it might be like, choose one student in your room, right? Yeah. Like, what, how would that student in your room, how would they answer this, right? You, and again, putting, putting yourself in someone else's shoes is always a great way to do an activity like this. And again, it's interesting to see, thanks again, folks, for sharing your hunches and crunches in the chat. Uh, you know, just that that theme that's right there, you know, as Marianne points out, this idea of care and well being for staff. How appreciated do folks feel, or how appreciated do they not feel? And how can we best communicate that, um, you know, in, in everything that we do? So I'm going to ask you just to put those hunches and crunches, put a pin in that for a moment. We are going to come back to it, but we're going to kind of pivot and ask you you were thinking through the lens of a peer. And we're going to ask you to kind of get back into your own perspective. So on slide eight, when you click here, it's going to take you over to our document called Crafting the Story of Our Learning Journey. And once I click on this, it has a whole series of different prompts. And you'll notice on the right for each of them, you can go ahead and download that one. Or again, you can just scroll through the guide. And I'm going to ask you to look through this series of prompts and pick one that kind of, it just appeals to you. If you were going to start writing for five minutes uninterrupted, this is a prompt that could get you started. So we'll take a few moments so you can kind of look through these and be thinking, what is it in terms of the past year and my learning journey that I have something to say about? Is it, I want to talk a little bit about my personal growth? Do I want to talk here about, you know, where I'm going from here, the, the pathways ahead? Do I want to think about what it is that I've learned about my team and how I might acknowledge the different people that have supported me along the way of this past year? So you've got a range of options here. We're going to give you some time just to kind of have a scroll through which of these prompts pulls you in. So the test for this, again, I would say, if we had a five minute timer and we were gonna ask you to respond, you're thinking, yes, for sure, I would be able to you know, write for that full five minutes. So just a little bit of time here, which of these prompts engages you? You feel like, yes, this would get me going as, as a storyteller. Once you've picked it, we'd love for, to hear in the chat which of these prompts has kind of pulled you in. So we'll take a few minutes, I'll be quiet. And then when you have found your prompt, please let us know about it over in the chat.
So thanks to those who have, have shared the, the prompt that's kind of pulled them in initially, giving you a little bit of a 30 second time warning um, to find what you think might be a really good fit or to find something that you think I would definitely have something to say about this. So as you think about your choice, does your choice change at all if we ask you to make sure that you're picking the prompt that really engages your personal vulnerability, as well as maybe some of the hunches and crunches that we shared earlier? And we're going to talk in a little bit about crafting that story, but this is sort of the, the test or the filter that we're asking you to put, put your choice through. If you think again about storytelling as an opportunity to share, to model that vulnerability, would you still pick the same prompt? Or when you go back in our chat, when you scroll back, or when you go back to the Jamboard and you think about what folks were sharing when they were thinking about somebody else's perspective, does the prompt connect to something there? So we'll give you a moment to sort of reflect and think about this. Does this prompt give me the chance for me to share and model some vulnerability? Um, you know, I, it seems like there's a little bit of theme with people saying that team one is really great and, and sharing and reflecting on ways that others have helped me. I would say absolutely. That's, that's a way that I would be able to model some vulnerability. So we'll give you a moment to think about that. And if you've changed your mind at all, let us know in the chat. Do you think, ah, actually, if I'm seeking a prompt that I know is going to give me a pathway forward to sharing my vulnerability, or I'm thinking about the hunches and crunches. And many of you were saying, yeah, my, my thoughts now, really looking after well-being of staff. Does that prompt allow you to connect with that? So let us know in the chat if now you've had a, a change of heart, or if you're thinking, no, actually, this tells me this is a, a prompt that sets me up um, puts me in a good position for me to share and, and touch on those topics. So if you're following along with us back on the slides, on slide 10, uh, you know, when I do kind of a storytelling activity, not just with school leaders, but with students, and I say, hey, if you want to be a leader in any field, you've got to get good at the, uh, the art and craft of storytelling. Sometimes people will say, well, says who? Trisha, just because you're telling me that, I, I don't know that that's enough. So on slide 10, we have a collection of some of our favorite research-backed resources that say, yes, storytelling is in fact a critical leadership tool. So, you know, I think Jeff and I would argue that engaging with storytelling is great for the community. It's great for us, but it's also an interesting muscle for us to flex as we are working on our leadership skills. So again, all of those resources uh, are research-backed but Jeff and I also are huge fans of uh, Nancy Duarte, who does a lot of a lot of work in terms of, um, you know, how do you tell a story? How do you tell a persuasive story? How do you use stories in your organization or in your community? So I thought we would just check in with her for a moment um, to see some of her advice in terms of how is it that we tap into uh, storytelling as a craft. 
Story is very important. If you look at the actual structure of a story, it's been used for thousands of years for cultures to pass on their morals and their lore and their values. Even pre-literate generations could pass those on and it stay fully intact. So the powerful thing about story is it, it demonstrates transformation and humans are hardwired to enjoy observing transformation. We've got the four seasons, we've got stories that are told that show transformation. We're hardwired to enjoy it. What happens is when someone tells a story, specifically a story of transformation, we're connected heart to heart. And those stories, because of its inherent structure, are easily repeated and passed along. It's not very often you can think of, oh, that last presentation I can practically repeat and stays intact. It just doesn't happen. But it does happen with story. So we need to use this as a tool to make sure that our stories are passed on and people have a way to spread our ideas through story. Great stories will resonate with an audience. And when you're sitting and listening to a really great story, your physical body is reacting to it. You don't even realize it. You can get a chill down your spine, your heart may race. Your eyes actually dilate so you can take more in. The power of a great story is how it connects us, how it makes us feel. It's also how um, in that connection, as we root for that hero to get over their roadblocks and emerge transformed, we're changed in the process. So story isn't just about observing change. It's about applying the learnings from that story to our own self um, to make sure that we too are transformed in some way through the power of story. Sometimes as a leader, we're supposed to be the one that's strong. We're supposed to be the one there keeping it all together. And it's a struggle to be so authentic and so transparent to tell personal stories. Uh, people are like, well, I'm here at work to get my job done. I'm not here to get emotional or I'm not here to, you know, uh, I've got a whole lot of other things instead of that. And I contend that, that uh, you would be a better leader should you stop and have these very human moments, these very human connections, right? It's like ants, right? They come together, they go doo -doo -doo -doo, and then they, they know where to go and they just keep going. And those kinds of moments that you do where you connect deeply with these people not only builds people's loyalties to you, it builds them to the brand, but the interesting thing is they align more quickly and you get so much more done doing these little moments of emotional connection and using story to make those moments of connection makes it even more powerful and uh, keeps the organization healthy and strengthens you as a leader. And I would say, you know, my experience in working with a variety of schools, has been those schools where storytelling is a part of the culture. Those are really, really healthy schools. So interesting to see some of you have said, okay, actually now when I'm thinking about my comfort zone and when I'm thinking about opportunities to get a little more vulnerable, maybe I would pick a different prompt. So we are gonna ask you to, to think, okay, is this an opportunity for you to do just that? Are you gonna change the prompt or does the one already, is it already a great fit? We're gonna ask you to, make the final call on one of those prompts. And then when you work your way over here to slide 11, we're gonna ask you to pick out one of these structures that gives you a potential start to telling a story generated from that prompt. So you have four corners here with four very different storytelling structures. Again, they're all meant to be pretty simple, right? And telling a story doesn't have to be super complex. The story spine, that's linked in here at the top left corner. Those of you who have seen any Pixar movie, um, that's the structure, right? So this will probably look very familiar to you, even if you've just, you know, you're a fan of Finding Nemo, where it's this. Once upon a time there was, every day, one day, because of that, because of that, until finally. That's the secret sauce for Pixar movies right there. So that might be a structure. And, and I love that, you know, Nancy Duarte was talking a lot about that idea of stories of transformation, stories that, uh, again, give us that example of change happening. And if, if you didn't experience change happening in the past year, I would be really, really surprised by that. So the story spine is a really great structure for you to get started with. Spark lines that's over here in the bottom left, um, this is also something that's created by Nancy Duarte, and it's also something that folks usually point out. Steve Jobs, lots of his talks, of course, have gone totally viral when people are talking about uh, talks or keynotes that, you know, they, they send chills up your spine. Of course, Steve Jobs is sort of known for being that kind of speaker. And it might be in part because he always follow, followed Nancy Duarte's 
spark line where you start off by telling people, hey, here's where we're at right now. But guess what? It could be this. Here's what it is right now. Here's where we could be. And your, your story is really following kind of the, here's the state that we're at. But what if we did this instead? And you've got two other options here, just to go through these quickly. Walking through where the story doesn't necessarily have a happy ending, right? And some of those prompts, when you're answering those questions, you might not necessarily go know where the learning is going, and that's okay. But where did it start? When did it get complicated? What was the, the test? And then even if you're not sure how this might work out, what do you know? A lot of you were saying in the chat that, you know, the team prompt really resonates with you because you saw your team come together. And you know that the end of the school year is not necessarily the end of the test. But what do you know now about your team? And the last one, this is uh, very common in any kind of superhero movies where it's, we might, you know, we, we kind of think this is what we thought happened. But really, when we rewind, we learn something else. So we may tell ourselves that what happened was fill in the blank. But if we go back and look closely, we actually realize. So what's the secret that's been revealed? So on slide 11, you have four different mini structures to get started with. We're going to ask you to have selected your prompt and try it out on one of these structures. So again, Jeff warned you at the beginning, this is not just a sit and get, we're asking you to do some thinking here. So we're gonna go on mute. We're gonna give you a few minutes to just trial that out, that pairing of, okay, here's my prompt. And it's hopefully a prompt that gives me the opportunity to model vulnerability. We know as leaders, that's important. And this is the structure that I'm gonna try to use in order to start the telling of what that story might be.
So just giving you about a two minute warning now. Uh, the expectation is not that you've you know, written or completed a story, but hopefully there is a seed that has emerged from your pairing of prompt and structure. So we'll just take about two minutes more working on that. If you feel so brave and bold as to share maybe the first two sentences that maybe you have in the chat, that would be great. Or if you could just share with us, what did you end up with in terms of your prompt and structure pairing. So take about two minutes, but if folks feel uh, like sharing over in the chat, we'd love to see what's the little seed um, that, that you have sort of started to plant in terms of sharing a story of your learning journey. If you wanna share that in the chat, we'd love to see what you've been thinking about. Thanks, Dan, for sharing that. I'd be curious to know uh, which structure you picked out for that, because in my mind, that works really well with the with the retcon, uh, with kind of thinking about, you know, here's here's maybe a, a secret that I learned about my community. You know, we can find solutions to things that um, are really really difficult and are really challenging. And I think it's it's going to be, uh, you know, as you say, it's it's going to be an urgent cry again. This idea of how do we pivot and and how do we how do we find solutions when there's a lot of pressure on us? And I, I love that phrase that, that Dan uses, uh, you know, saying it's moderate vulnerability. I would say it, it's vulnerability full stop. You don't have to qualify it because what you've said is, hey, I wasn't superhuman. Or another way I would say that is I wasn't perfect. And I think sometimes in schools, we forget to just either tell ourselves that, that it is okay to not be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. And so just as we have engaged with this pairing and getting that seed there, and again, thanks those of you who are kind of sharing those seeds, this is exactly how I would facilitate it with, you're not expected to have the full story right now. Let's just collect some seeds, very low stakes. And the name of this session is, you know, honoring, honoring that reflection. And in my mind, Honoring somebody's insight or honoring somebody's reflection means I've really given them some space to develop their ideas. 
Um, I don't know about you, but you know, I, I've been at schools where it's been the end of a school year, not necessarily like this school year, where it's like, here's the index card or here's the post-it note. What's the big lesson that you learned this year? And it's sort of like, I'm supposed to come up with that in two minutes time and it's on a post-it note and what happens to that post-it note, who knows? That's not necessarily honoring my reflection. But if you tell me, you know, here's a menu, we want to support you with choice and we want to give you a lot of time to really think about what's been important to you. Um, that's a little bit better. So if I'm facilitating this, I would do it just the way that we've experienced it with let's take it one small step at a time, let some of those ideas percolate up. And then further to that, when we're talking about sharing our stories, you might be thinking, yeah, maybe it is just a small group where we're each going to go around and, and try to complete that or try to have that seed grow and talk maybe for three to five minutes. Certainly, that is a sharing of stories. But I think it's great to also honor people's perspective and know that we like to share our stories in drastically different ways. So if you're following along with us here on slide 12, when you click here, it's going to take you over to our story showcase uh, force copy document. So I have to make a copy of it, but then lo and behold, I have my own. And we've drafted for you a few different ways that you might do a community story sharing. It might be, you know what, Jeff loves doing sketch notes. He could totally do a sketch note in response to the prompt. Uh, I have students that love the idea of creating Insta stories. There's a template for that. They might do that. Blackout poetry. You've got a whole range here. And again, this is not meant to be kind of a prescriptive list. It's meant to kind of be thinking, what are the different options? What are the menus and how might you customize it? So we've created this for you and tried to give you a range of how much time do you want to put into this end of year reflection? Um, there might even be a few items that you would add to the menu that this could be done in 30 minutes and that's fine. But in our mind, the important thing is that choice piece. If we are honoring reflection and we are honoring one another's stories, we are not saying it has to be this story, it has to be that way. And so folks also sometimes say, but wait a second, you've got that menu of prompts. You know what? That is just part of the rough, rough draft, the brainstorming. You can leave that. That was just there to get you, you know, get the creative juices kind of going. And, and we find menus are really, really useful for that. But if you've got members of staff or you've got students who are saying, actually, there's a different question that my story is going to answer, that's great. It's their learning journey. But we do want to make sure that we've got some scaffolding in place to support it. So again, you've got your copy of thinking about, well, what is our menu? And it might be that you team up with somebody else at your school and say, let's, you know, we, we know our community really well. Let's create our menu. This is just the rough draft for it. So wrapping up here, uh, you know, again, this quote is really powerful. I think the best way to get humans to venture into unknown terrain is to make that terrain familiar and desirable by taking them there first in their imaginations. And part of the reason that we, we grabbed hold of this quote is because all of the stories that we're telling, the point hopefully is even in what you know arguably could have been the most difficult year in the history of education, there were learning journeys, there were remarkable learning journeys. So let's craft those stories, let's remind each other of that resilience. Um, and let's engage with one another's imaginations in terms of just giving them space, honoring them in the way that we want them to. If you continue to work on your story that hopefully you know you had that seed from today, we'd love to hear it. Um, Jeff and I are, are really honored whenever we get emails or responses to the podcast or to the, any of the free webinars. So please consider sharing it with us in an email. We'll write you back, we always do. Um, if you're feeling like I want an even bigger audience, you want to share your story on the podcast or part of it, or even just your idea in terms of what you're going to do in terms of telling stories, we would love to share that with the Shifting Our Schools podcast audience. Um, so you can reach out to us again with info at shiftingschools.com to find out ways to do that. And we want to take you back here on slide 15 
remember the person that you picked when we asked you to do that empathy map and you were thinking through their perspective? Well, over here on slide 15, uh, you know, thank you for coming to this webinar. We realized that coming to a webinar in June is not an easy thing in the year that we've had. So we wanted to, you know, really thank folks for making that extra effort and for giving some of your time and energy to us. So on slide 15, we've got a little bit of a, a special thank you to you, our webinar audience. When you click that link, it's going to take you over to um, a, a brand new, we're calling these our team paced professional learning pathways. Uh, and we've got a two for one deal just for our webinar participants. So if your school is continuing to work on your blended learning strategies um, and you would like to do this and you'd like to do it with a partner, um, again, this is a limited offer. You and that person that you were thinking of perhaps can, can continue to learn together if you would like to do that. Um, in closing, I think I did have one more slide here. No, I did not. Um, in closing, I did just wanna mention if you liked that crafting our learning journey collection of menus, um, I'm sure Jeff has the link handy. It's just as of this week that we have 40 free guides for amazing educators like you. So if you're thinking, I love this idea of menus, um, I do want to do a better job with reflection. Uh, you know, we, we talk to people all the time about this idea of almost rebranding reflection. Of, of making it something that's engaging. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other guides that have content that, again, it's just sort of looking at the things that really matter to us. I love that we started this session talking about really wanting to make sure that we make teachers feel appreciated and valued. Uh, so there's some material there as well. Yeah, and a big thanks to Trisha, who uh, over the past year has put together 40 free guides uh, if you are a listener of our podcast, you know that she's uh, constantly making free guides for the podcast that you can find over there. Uh, all sorts of prompts uh, as we think about the end of the year and what that might be. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the reason why we wanted to do this is, as Trisha said, a lot of times we ask teachers to reflect or we ask kids to reflect on the end of the year. We want to make sure we do reflection right. We want to make sure it, it's not the sticky note. Like when you said that, Trisha, I'm like, oh my gosh, how many times was that the last staff meeting of the year was, you know, write down something on a sticky note and give it to the principal or put it up on the wall or whatever it was for others to read. You know, and I, I, how do we how do we truly capture some of the learning uh, that happened, the emotions of this year? I mean, September was a long time ago, uh, and you know, there, there's a lot that we've learned and a lot that we've been through, and so we really need to make sure we honor that uh, so that we don't lose it moving forward. Because there is a lot we've learned. And education is and will be in a different place after this. So that that's our hope for for this session today, and and to give you some resources to hopefully do that with. And again, you know, I'll just mention uh, the, the three latest ones here are, I think, very topical, you know, talking about just really looking after one another. I think part of that is managing this transition into summer for students and for ourselves. So we have a free guide there that's full of some resources to really have a thoughtful transition. Um, anyway, we hope those guides are useful. We would, again, really, really love to hear back from you if, if during today's session you're thinking, this is a story that I want to share with staff, or this is a session that I want to take and I want to recontextualize and deliver at my school. We'd love to hear back from you in terms of what next steps you took. So please do consider uh, dropping us an email. That's info at shiftingschools.com. Or if you need a little bit of help, you're drafting that story and you want some feedback, Jeff and I are also happy to do that as well. We've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to throw in the chat, uh, let us know or if you uh, click the little raise your hand button we will uh, I'll, it says on our side allow to talk so we will allow you to talk uh, if you'd rather ask a question or have a comment or maybe there's a structure that's worked for you uh, let us know and we can uh, unmute you and allow you allow you to talk as as well it's just the way this is zoom webinars work uh, so again if you feel good and you, you got what you came here for uh, have a great rest of your Let's say Thursday. 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 Uh, you you are you you are free to leave if you want to hang out with us for about another ten minutes or so and and bounce ideas off or, or have any questions or comments. Please feel free to do that as well.
Sure, Dan. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Hey, talking permitted. Look, I can talk. There you go. Oh my gosh, this whole time I've just been trying to talk and talk and talk and you guys won't let me. I feel so much better now. <laughs> I didn't really have anything to say. I just needed to talk for a while. That uh, sounds good to me. I just really wanted to tell you guys, honestly, the materials that you presented this year were of such great quality and so well-timed. I just, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. It, it really made a significant difference to a lot of people. And, oh, you. and you guys should, your superstars and that may fade over the next x years i don't know but man you are the right people at the right time and the quality that you did was just awesome and i just want oh. you to hear that from me i i think you guys knocked it out of the park so thank oh, well, you well thank you dan thank you so much that's really kind yeah it's very kind of you i'm just doing the best we can to support where and when uh when available so but and I will say, Dan, actually, you know, some of the resources, most of the resources that we've created, they were responses to folks saying, hey, this is something that we need. So, um, you know, again, if there's something that you're looking for that's not there, let us know and we'll get to work on it. Well, you guys, you're, just, you're so great at validating and responding and individualizing what you're doing. Uh, you, you really are model educators for what we need right now. So thank you. Um, and and I will, I'll reach out if I, it occurs to me, but I'm like everybody else. I'm super busy, man. I yeah, of course. hope I can keep my head out of the sand, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> few more, few more days anyways, right? For this year. Right. So awesome. All right, you guys take Thank care. You, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. That warmed my heart. Oh my gosh. It's unbelievable. And I'm glad that we were recording that. So if I have a bad day, I'm going to come back to I this know, recording and watch and, that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah, it's, it's so great. Thank you very much, Travis. That's really kind. Yes, thank you, Travis. All right, folks, I think that's a wrap for our free webinar series, academic school year 2020-2021. Um, hopefully we've got some more of these for next academic year, yeah, Jeff. Let's hope. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you spending time with us.